Hi everybody, my name is Naya and I'm the Black Female Engineer. And today we are going to be looking at the resume that got me my dream job as a software engineer. So let's get right into it. I have my computer right in here and let's do it. So right off the bat, what we see here is my name in big bold letters this is very important because if we want to right off the bat be able to say hey this is me don't forget about me and this is everything i've done so we have nine the black female engineer and then we have our contact information right underneath there so for me that is my email my github and my phone number now this is my resume, but it's not. Of course, you know, that is not my actual email, actual GitHub, or actual phone number, or actual name. But let's roll with it for that little portion. So right under that short info section there, we have my education. In each section that I have within my resume, so we have the education, we have the relevant projects, additional experience, and extracurriculars. In each portion of these, everything within it is listed from most recent to least recent. So if you see here without my education, it's my coding boot camp first and then the university degree that I received. Some people would argue that it's more important to put the most relevant to least relevant, but I prefer it in this reverse chronological order. So we have Coding Bootcamp. Of course, I actually put the name of the Coding Bootcamp here, but in this case, I did not. But I also accompanied it with a short blurb of the main goals and focus of the Coding Bootcamp. I don't imagine this blurb being different depending on the boot camp you went into, it might be different depending on the program it was. Like, let's say you did cybersecurity or data science instead of full stack engineering. But then, right after that, we have my university degree. I went to CU Boulder, Sco Buffs, and as I've mentioned before in my previous videos, I double majored in finance and accounting. And so that was within the Lead School of Business. And I put a section here that would that would state my GPA. I did that because for me, I was very fresh out of college when I was applying to these software engineering roles. And so for me, just, you know, university brain, I put that. But to me, even if you're just a few years out of college, to me, this could be very much done away with, to be completely honest. Then what I think is one of the more important sections of my resume is this skills and passions portion. In the skills and passions portion, I really just list out my personal skills and passions. And so really making sure I'm noting what languages and frameworks I'm proficient in and also noting any other resources or add-ons such as Git or Postman. These aren't actual languages or frameworks, but they are things that many developers utilize within the development lifecycle. So decided to put that in as well. Then if we go down to relevant projects, this was for me, very important to make sure it was smack back in the middle of the resume because as you know, I got into this field through a boot camp and not through university or an actual major. I was not a computer science major. And so my experience isn't with software engineering. I don't have software engineering internships or jobs or anything like that. And so I really wanted relevant projects to be the main focus for the recruiter instead of focusing on the experience I may not have. And so here I state the three 
full stack applications I built out within the coding bootcamp. That was I Can't Breathe, Piggy, and Mints. I Can't Breathe, I've mentioned this in my previous video of how to ensure success after coding bootcamp. I'll link it below, but I am very passionate about social justice. And I, in this case, I decided to build an app that would really aid people starting their social awareness journey. And that was I Can't Breathe. So with each of the projects I list within the section, I follow it up immediately with the languages and frameworks I used to build it. And so in this case, that was Ruby on Rails, PostgreSQL, React, and HTML and CSS. And I do this to one, show them that, hey, I'm not just saying I have certain skills when, you know, I really didn't build anything with it. I really want to show, hey, I listed these skills and passions up top and look, I've built actual applications with those things. And so it's really to just validate my earlier claims. And so then after that, I list off one, what the app is. So in this case, it was a pro progressive web app providing information about Black Lives Matter related cases, such as Elijah McClain, Breonna Taylor, and lesser known stories. And it was deployed as of October 2020. So I, in each of the projects I list, I like to give a rundown of what it is, one, but then two, give some insight maybe into some of the features it possesses or any cool um, elements of the app. And so for this, it was the fact that it was a progressive web app. Below with Piggy, I state that it provides expense tracking and it also has a sleek and clean user interface. And then with Mints, I state that it utilizes, you know, REST APIs and CRUD methodology and really just all those buzz buzzwords to really show the person reading this, hey, I know what these buzzwords are, I know what they mean, and not only do I know what they are, but I work with those things in my projects and I'm proficient in such verbiage. And so I would highly advise looking at the actual buzzwords that the company or the application uses when describing the job. Do they say they want a front-end engineer that knows X, Y, and Z? Do they say, do they mention CRUD? Do they mention APIs? What, whatever those specifics are that they mention, if that is something you are proficient in, make sure you add it to your resume. I'm sure we've all heard that thing of, oh, tailor your resume for X, Y, and Z. And to be honest, it's true. It's very tiring and it can get just so, so just exhausting when you've been applying to jobs day in and day out. And on top of it, you need to customize these resumes. It's very, very just a lot. And so for me, I recommend adding those buzzwords that you may see that you hadn't previously had in your resume, adding them up here in the skills and passions. Now, I'm not saying to lie. That is not what I'm saying. Don't just copy and paste words and, you know, vocabulary that you've never even heard of before that day. Don't do that. But sometimes you don't realize you have a desired skill until someone says, we want this skill. And then you're like, oh, I have that and that's listed nowhere on my resume. So let me just make sure I add that. That's what I mean. So just keep an eye on the specific requirements and qualifications that the company you're applying for says they want. Then down here we have additional experience. So in the additional experience, that is where I stated my work background. For me, my work background was in financial and accounting firms. So that being Bank of America, Merrill Lynch, and Ernst & Young. And so I added those items because it's the way I see it, 
the things I have learned through those positions, many of these things can be applied as a software engineer. Being diligent, being detail-oriented, being motivated and driven, those are things that you want to show to your employer that you are no matter what position you're in. In both of these mentions of my previous experience, I'd like to start off with a more general description of what I was expected to do day to day. And then I like to follow that up with something that I did that was unique to me. Something that I did that wasn't asked of me, a way I went above and beyond, a way that I was different from maybe the other people in my role. Because at the end of the day, yes, it's great that you know, did your job, but it's even more great seeing that you look for ways to enhance the workplace and enhance your duties even when it's not asked of you. So that's what I decided to do here. And in each of my notes of either projects or jobs, on the right hand side, you can see here that I input the date of either when the project was finished. So up here with my relevant projects, finished in September 2020, August, July. But then with experience, I like to say the duration of um, my work. So June 2019 to August 2019, June, August 2018, because they were internships, so they were three months long. Then finally, we have our last section. For me, that was extracurricular activities. I, y'all, I just graduated college. That's what I call them. But I've seen many people add a final section saying either volunteering or hobbies and interests um, or anything like that. And so for me, I've mentioned before, very, very passionate about social justice issues. And so this last summer in June, I was the creator and organizer of a vigil for George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Ahmaud Arbery, Elijah McClain, and the other people who have lost their lives due to racial injustice. And this was actually something that was covered by 5280 Magazine. I received support from elected officials such as the Attorney General, um, and it was actually covered by Nine News, Denver Channel, Westward, 5280 Magazine. So that's something I am extremely proud of um, for doing, and it's something I put here because I want to share that, yes, I am an engineer, and I will get the job done, but as a person, here I am. And this is a great place to put really who you are as a person. Because, I mean, at the end of the day, when it's 7, 8, 9 p.m. and y'all are stuck in the office, people just want to like you. You know what I mean? People want to know that they can like have fun with you, have like joke around with you. And it's, you don't want to make a bad time worse. And you don't want to hire somebody that's going to make a bad time worse. So you really want to let the company in on who you are as a person. So put in the vigil. And then I also put in that I was a member and mentor of the, of the Diverse Scholars Program and a participant of the Goldman Sachs undergraduate camp. And I would say that those last two points are more school related. I'd say to really be creative in your last portion of your resume. I heard of a story once where this person for their hob they had a hobbies and interests section in instead of extracurricular. And for their hobbies and interests, they put barbecuing. And when the interviewer asked them about this, yo, they went in, like they went in on like the type of meat they like to smoke and the different spices they use and the brands and like the heat and like all, I, I don't know much about barbecuing, but I was just like, wow. And so were they, so were the company because it was something so just like quirky and different. And it was the fact that he had, a, it wasn't that, you know, oh, I like barbecue. It was like the passion behind this affinity. And it was just very, very hilarious to think about. So don't think you need to be stuck in the bounds of like, oh, it's a resume and I need to be you know, t -t 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 like, no, like let the company get a sneak peek of who you are and then hopefully in the interview you can let them in a little more and then once you get the job then you, you can let them in even more and happier so no just remember that you don't have to be so like cut and dry with these um 
with these resumes. So no, y'all, please be kind because it's very scary, you know, exposing <laughs> yourself like this. As a previous business student, you know, that our resumes is something we would keep very close to our chest. Like you cannot show this to anybody because it's like your social security number. It is like who I am in one page. So no, please subscribe to grow this community more and please press the like button if you'd like to see more content around the job hunt process, whether it be interviewing or, or more detailed videos about really what to put on your resume and ways to make your resume even better and stand out and things like that. And put in the comments, what's something that you would put as your like hobbies and interests, something that would be a little bit more on the quirky side or just a little bit different because I'm very interested to know that. I I don't know, I tend to see myself as more boring in that regard, but no, so thank you so much for watching and later in the week I'll be sharing some tips on how to actually survive boot camp itself. Less about the job hunt afterwards and securing a job afterwards and more about staying on track and getting through that boot camp life. So stay tuned for that. But no, see you all later. Bye.